Welcome to the ITSP Magazine Podcast Network, a modern, innovative multimedia platform, broadcasting ideas and connecting minds. Every company has a story to tell, from the small startup to the large enterprise, and everything in between. This is one of them. We hope you enjoy this brand story conversation. All right, here we are. We're coming to you from Black Hat USA 2024 Hacker Summer Camp in Las Vegas, where lots of cool technologies come to life, and hopefully organizations learn how to protect their business from all the things that are coming at them from all different angles. And today I'm thrilled to have TK County with me from DNS Filter. TK, how are you? Very good, thanks. It's good to have you on the show. And uh, I think some good energy. I was down at the booth earlier today and some good traffic there. Hopefully some good conversations. Yeah, it was really crowded. Um, a lot of people interested in, in solutions. And you're, you're at the front line of a lot of what's going on. <laughs> In Definitely. Terms of, in terms of uh, network traffic anyway, internet traffic. So tell me a little bit uh, to kind of set the stage, what DNS Filter does. So DNS Filter is a cybersecurity company that um, le leverages the domain name system, DNS, which is fundamental to the internet, to, um, to, to filter. Basically, um, we let through the good, we filter out the bad. And uh, we've designed a product that basically is usable by basically anyone. You don't really need to be an expert. Um, we operate globally. Um, this is something also important to us because attackers operate globally. Um, yesterday I pulled some stats. We, we saw about 130 billion DNS requests. Wow, with a B. Yeah, B. Uh -huh. And we blocked about 3.6 billion. It hovers between 3 billion, 4 billion that we block. Now, what you have to think about, when we block, that means we, we save somebody from getting hacked, right? And that really feels good. I mean, it might have been a personal friend, grandmother, auntie, uncle. These are not security experts. Right. But they clicked on something bad, and we helped them out. And that feels good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a good it's a good mission to have to protect the, world, uh, the world's transactions and, and, and their experience online. So. How does what you do connect to business here? Because we're, we're obviously at a business event. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you work with customers who have businesses or do you work with customers that have customers that they're also trying to protect? What's, what's the scope of what it's, you offer? It's really all over the map. It's right. so easy to set up that you know, we, we actually might be using it on the Wi-Fi here I, you know, and we don't know it. Un until again, until you get a block page <laughs> that said you, we just saved you from uh, it's getting very likely here that yeah, the block page would come up. Especially <laughs> here. But you know, coffee shops, hospitality, hotels, airports, um, everybody runs our, our thing. Uh, I mean, this is actually why we see 130 billion requests per day, and this is globally, right? Um, the, the technology sits so fundamental in the internet stack that it, it actually, um, here, let me walk through the life cycle. Yeah, so, so you click on a, a web page, a link, maybe it's in the email. The first thing that happens is the domain name system has to translate that name into an address. And we're, sen we're essentially a filter for that. So if you go to an address that we know is bad, we'll block you. If not, we'll stay out of the way. Right. And so organizations have to choose to use you. Where, where, where do you sit in the spectrum of the internet, I right. guess is the question. So um, it's usually where um, you connect to the service provider. It actually might be on your, on your laptop in the case of the mobile user. In the case of a coffee shop, it might be that Wi-Fi router that's uh, sitting there. In the case of a, maybe a retail organization, it might be their public Wi-Fi. Okay. That, and all of those things, when, when that whole community that sits on that network is having to connect to something ex external or really internal, um, DNS is involved because it has to be translated to a, a number for the computer to know where to go, like a name translation to an address. And when you go to that address, we've already done the categorization to know whether that's a, in the case of threat, it might be a phishing site. It might be, um, it might be something not related to threat. So let me point this out. 
um, there are things that are globally bad, like uh, vulnerable websites that want to hack you. There are things that are globally bad just for the human race. Like uh, CSAM stands for Child Sexual Abuse Material. This is just bad. It's a bad category, and frankly, I wish we didn't see any of it. But you know, we've seen that whole uh, websites that do that grow maybe by 4x in the past year. Now, okay, this is a category. We should block it, yeah, right? Because this is related to sex trafficking and bad things. So who's, who's using DNS filter for that then? Is it law enforcement? Is it... Uh, it won't, yeah, first, and for, first and foremost, it is your, just your common everyday user. Okay. And, and again, like if you're on a public Wi-Fi, you're, you think you're anonymous, you're going to want to use that type of uh, site to do your business, whatever it is. You, you might use a public Wi-Fi to even hack another um, site. We, because we sit so fundamental in that stack, we can offer public Wi-Fi uh, a, a level of security that's frankly affordable, it's fast and it's effective. I mean, that's really where we sit. So, like when I when I you know make the claim that we're trying to make a, a safer internet for everyone, there is there is a lot of people involved in that. There yeah. might be a, a managed service provider okay. that uh, that company uses. It might they might buy us direct. They just go to our website, click on the thing, you know, configure two parameters. They're off and running. Like like your home network. Right. It would take you about six clicks to set it up, and you'd be all set. Okay. And do you, so do you actually sell to consumers as well? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. I didn't realize the, the scope of, I mean, you were, you were saying it, but mm -hmm. I just never clicked the, the scope of what you do it's, yeah. is there. That's, um, that's phenomenal. So let's take, let's take this environment, for example. We don't know if you're running here or not, but certainly there's a lot of activity on this network. Um, it's probably not in, with ill intent, <laughs> let's yeah. say, right? Either for research purposes or whatever. Um, what kind of scenarios might we encounter here that, that you might be protecting? Let's see, probably the most classic would be, you know, if they're, when I say we, we kind of play our part in the larger whole, um, because DNS um, is part of your protection, there might be something also doing network detection and response. Mm -hmm. There might be something on the endpoint doing protection. But let's take a scenario. Let's say that um, a, uh, a person here were to hack the Wi-Fi and get in the middle of your traffic. And so, so man in the middle for, mm -hmm. does that cover email as well or just web traffic? Yeah, uh, I guess if web or email. If it's web email, yeah. then it would yeah. be, yeah. Well, yeah, and, and basically your next action is to, to click on something, they're, they're going to try and, um, you know, steal your password or whatever it is, the credential. Now, at some point in time, they're probably going to have to uh, reach out to what is called their command and control servers, uh, their bots, mm -hmm. um, where they get their global power. And, and those are going to be blocked by us. So somewhere within that kill chain, uh, DNS will play a vital role and in, in the protection. And I, I make that point because, you know, I think we're past the days where you can just do detection. No, nobody needs a, a longer list of things to fix. Just fix it. So, yeah, I think protection is really the game these days. So for, for an organization, what, how, let's talk to the CISOs here. Do, I presume most CISOs recognize what DNS does, <laughs> of course, and, and the value that you bring. Do you find that... that programs today take into account what you have to offer or are there still gaps? I think so. Gaps, yeah? I think so. Um, for an organization that already has their role open for a chief information security yeah. officer, you're talking about right. different, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about somebody who already has a program, they already have a budget, yeah. they, um, they consider DNS protection one of many of their suite. So yeah, there's, there's not really an awareness issue there. Okay. It's just, you know, does the solution fit their purpose? Not only does it fit monetarily, does it fit operationally? Does it have the right adjacency to the other products in their suite? There's a lot to consider as a CISO. Yeah. And then so if we move to 
smaller, perhaps less mature organizations where they don't have security leader, let alone a, maybe even not even a security team. Um, yeah. They might rely on an IT provider that may or may not provide security services. Uh, what's what's kind of the, the awareness at that level? Th there, I think, you know, the, the really barrier to entry is um, the ability to actually be effective without 10 years of experience. You know, I mean, I, I want to be as effective as any music streaming uh, service or, or YouTube. You know, anybody can use it at maybe any age. And, and really, that just comes down to um, design. You know, you have to design um, as a product that is going to um, not require that level of expertise. So talk to me about the onboarding. Um, let's go to the, the user, yep. individual user, and also somebody who might be running a network. How do you how do you get down there? So uh, maybe two scenarios. Okay. Let's say uh, let's take a, a site centric scenario. So you, you're setting up a home network, and you fire up your Wi-Fi, and at some point in time, your Wi-Fi uh, is going to ask for a, a, an IP address for the DNS server. You just point it to us. You're done. And typically, the ISP provides that, and you're just swapping yep. it to yours. That's exactly okay. right. Yep. And then and do they have to provide you with the ISP DNS to... Nope. 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 We okay. do all the global resolution. Okay. Yeah. And, and it doesn't matter where you are in the world either. So, um, so that, that's, you know, that's basically one scenario. Let's call that site-centric. Okay. The other one is, is maybe uh, endpoint-centric. Let's say that, you know, you, you have a, just a five... You have a laptop, you have an iPad, you have an iPhone. You just need to um, protect those things. And, and let's say you move around a lot. <laughs> again, you go to the thing that says DNS, you change the address. Uh, again, you, you, know, you have to come to the website and, and click on buy, buy a package. Okay. Um, but yeah, you point it to address and you're off and running. So the, the, again, the setup time is, is next to nothing. And, and frankly, it's just really informative. You know? Half the time, what we're really good at, frankly, is it's what leading the threat category, no matter whether you're doing phishing or you're trying to you know, do ransomware, DNS is involved because there's some form of deception. Mm. You know, it, whether they're playing on your emotion or the acuteness of the situation, maybe you know, it's the election, maybe it's Christmas, you, know, you're, you're, you see something that you have to take advantage of right now and it's high emotion, like, oh my God, I need that. You're going to click on the link. I, I don't care. You know, we're humans. And, and th that, that's a category of deception that I think is only going to get more severe, particularly with generative AI. Yeah. So I, my thing is the only way you can combat that is, is to enhance your human abilities with some machine scale solution. And that's really where DNS filter sits. And it has to be at a global level, as you described. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So I love those two scenarios, and, and I mean, talk about simple, <laughs> yeah. and talk about fundamental. I think for years I've struggled with why can't we solve the phishing ransomware problem if we can just get in the way of the, the command and control where they're doing all this stuff from. Right. Um, we actually have a chance. <laughs> Right, and I, I'm a very pragmatic here. I, it shouldn't, if, if you can set up your phone or your home network to be on the internet, then you possess the skills already to use us. Yeah. Like if I go beyond that, then I'm outside of scope, right? So that's really the bar for us. I love it. And for, for somebody who's interested, maybe a security team in an organization or an MSSP who's managing an organization's security program. What types of things do you do to ensure that you have the insights for what is real, what's not, yep. in terms of a, a, threat, a threat? Yeah, I think that's also very pragmatic. You know, for the CISO, they're going to want to know stats. Mm -hmm. They're going to want to make it easy to implement policy. You know, like for, for schools, it's really important for them to just click a button and say, uh, the policy is you shouldn't be able to go to any website that uh, is self-harm. Okay, that's their policy. 
Now, do they want to do the work of categorizing the world's <laughs> websites? No, right? right? But when they buy us, they get that. It's one click of the button. So again, for the policy makers. So you do the categories and yeah. the policies. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like I mentioned, CSAM is just a pure category. You know, pornography, okay. uh, mark, you know, might be car sales, whatever their policy is. There's just a ton of policies in there, one click away. So, and we manage that. So as things get added, uh, removed, that's all just within that set. Um, and then again, you know, let's take another scenario. Let's say it's an incident responder. Let's say that right. um, you want to, something has happened and you want to see uh, what DNS uh, domains this particular laptop has seen in the last 30 days. <laughs> that, that, that's another real scenario that's of value, right? You, you're looking yeah. through a general ledger now and you're going to find out, oh, wow, it, it actually happened on the 4th of this month, not the 5th. So it's a, a history tracking for, and then a, 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 I presume it's an IP address or a MAC address that you're watching, or what is it? It's the DNS call. Like they, they went to www.somewhere.com. How do you map it to the caller? The client, the yeah. client, the client that the, the mobile okay. user installs. Okay. Yeah. Got mm -hmm. it. Yeah, because one of the things I was curious about is um, because it's so simple and, and it essentially is set it and forget it for the most part, yeah. mm -hmm. um, at some point you might want to know that you're doing what you're being asked yeah, to do. Yeah, it's right? being effective, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How many sites did we block right. uh, and, which, and who, who went to those sites? Yeah, um, yeah all of those things are very table stakes yeah. for the offering. And then another point I want to make, and you can reinforce it, is it, it's automatic. So we're not we're not creating an alert here that somebody has to chase down to see if it's real or not, and That's then right. make some some response decision. So the MTTD and MTTR is effectively this one and the same and immediate. It's at machine scale. Yeah. It'll probably happen in less than ten milliseconds. Yeah. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Well, TK, it's been uh, it's been great chatting with you. I don't know if there's something we we didn't touch on that you want to share with folks. Um, no, we covered we covered a lot of ground. Uh, you know, dnsfilter.com. You can you can buy the the basic package, the pro package, and the enterprise package. Perfect. Most you, most of the small businesses go with basic or pro. And you have a good channel program. A lot of uh, yep. partners. Yeah, a lot of ours. Uh, again, you know, it's pretty, particularly if they're going to mid. To, to larger customers, they're selling us within a suite. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I'll leave it with that and uh, a call to have everybody connect with TK and Please do. Uh, Please meet do. the meet the DNS filter team and and get that first line of defense in place. Fantastic. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you, and thanks everybody for listening. Hope you enjoy this uh, brand story with uh, TK and the DNS filter, and stay tuned for more. enjoyed this episode and that you will come back for more brand stories on ITSP Magazine. If you want to share your company's brand story, go to ITSPMagazine.com and explore our advertising options to learn more. Remember to share this podcast with your friends, family, and colleagues, and stay tuned for more brand stories as we continue our journey toward redefining cybersecurity, technology, and society.